Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zeko Football Channel. Manchester City are looking to continue their dominance at the top of the Premier League by signing RB Leipzig's Gvardiol, one of the best young centre-backs in the world. Today we will dive into and talk about how he will improve the English and European champions. If you are new to the channel, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button, you like the video and turn on notifications. But now, let's discuss how Gvardiol improves Manchester City. Manchester City have won the treble and they've only gone and added the most exciting defender in world football today, I'd argue, in Gvardiol. He is absolutely sensational and this is the position that I think he's going to be playing most out on this left hand side. But don't get it twisted, he's not a left back. He's not a left back, he's a centre back. And we know that he's a centre back based on his time at Leipzig, but also he can play left back, which means that his flexibility in almost this hybrid role is something that's going to be utilised by Guardiola, but out on this left hand side, the Nathan Ake role, if you will. Ake has been an absolute revelation out here. However, He's 28 years old and I think that Pep sooner rather than later is going to be wanting someone to either deputise for him or to replace him outright and that I believe is Gvardiol. His dynamism on the ball and off the ball are two incredible talents that he has at his disposal. He's very good at reading the space and he's very quick. He can move off of different players runs and then still make sure that he has enough time, space and ability to move the ball forwards. He drives past players effortlessly. And in this City side, I think he plays out on this left. John Stones will move into midfield to partner Rodri like he has done for the previous few months. He can play in this double pivot position with Rodri, allowing Manchester City to transform into a back three. Kyle Walker is something of a doubt, so you could have a Kanji. We don't know where Walker is going to go. You could have Rico Lewis there as well. But Walker is always an option to move into that centre-back role, just with a little bit more pace to go in behind. But it should look something like this and here we have it we have the back three we have the midfield two we have the two eights that can go forwards as well as the two wingers and obviously the number nine in Erling Haaland of course Julian Alvarez is an option but when we're talking about the way that Manchester City play Guardiol just suits them perfectly he can play at a left back slot as we've spoken about but he can also play as that left sided centre back he has the cover of Diaz who can help him out when he ever needs to Akanji is very good out on this right hand side but he can also play right back it's just a system and a player that seems like he fits Man City and it really does seem like something that is a no brainer really Let's have a look at another scenario that could be on the cards for Gvardiol. And here we have it. We have them set up in a back four. I've got Rico Lewis out on this left-hand side, Akanji playing that right back. And the same thing is almost going to happen in the scenario, but it can happen on the other side. And this is allowed by the fact that Gvardiol is so comfortable playing at centre-back. Now, I do think that Aki really found his role in this Man City side, playing at left-back and then slotting in to be a left-sided centre-back. However, Gvardiol is mainly a centre-back who likes to play left-back occasionally or can do it on certain times but if Rico Lewis came into midfield to be a more bold and attacking thought in this Manchester City team partnering the likes of Rodri or even John Stones if they decided to play him in central defensive midfield I think that Lewis moving in Gvardiol coming out it's his ability out on this left hand side and his physicality that is something that can really help this Man City side if we think about the height the presence the power of the likes of Akanji Diaz Gvardiol number one you're not beating them in the air number two going forwards heading wise it's going to be ridiculous and the pace power and presence that they have with all three of them combined is something that is absolutely terrifying genuinely man city could be one of the best defensive units in the world next year and they've only made it better with Guardiol. finally let us have a look at one more scenario that i believe could really improve them it's something that's more of a radical step here we have him out on this left hand side and we know he can drive forwards, we know that he can cover around and help Diaz, but I've actually gone for a three at the back straight off. Instead of it being a four and then transitioning using some kind of inverted player, I've actually got John Stones here as this central defensive midfielder. That's because I've pushed Rodri forward a little bit further to partner Kevin De Bruyne as two holding centre mids. This is to allow Julian Alvarez to come in as a second striker next to Erling Haaland, who will be making runs with the likes of Bernardo Silva and Jack Grealish. I think Pep Guardiola would try to change things next year, and I think it would be foolish of us to try and assume that we know what's going on in his head. However, this is something that I think could 
be a little bit different, but at the same time utilizing those same mechanics that he enabled this Man City side to play with. Rodri just moving that little bit further forward, partners Kevin De Bruyne whose hamstrings are definitely going to a certain extent. Alvarez has the energy, the power and presence to drop that little bit deeper like he has done for Man City in the past. And then you've got John Stones who is essentially becoming a central defensive midfielder day by day. I think he's becoming less, less of a centre back and I think the addition of Guardiol coming into this side only further allows Stones to move into midfield. Partnering and creating this diamond with De Bruyne, Rodri and Alvarez I think creates a different kind of dynamic for Manchester City. It also unlocks the likes of Bernardo Silva and Jack Grealish to still go and do their thing and then you've still got Erling Haaland but the passing lanes are open that little bit more. Rodri has a very good passing man. I think if you pushed him a little bit further forward you'd see him making some really incisive passes through into Haaland. John Stones is very good at shielding this back three. And then let's be honest, if you get past John Stones, you've only got uh, the tower that is a kanji, but it can also move very fast, the brutal, brutal machine that is Ruben Diaz, and then one of the best up-and-coming young centre-backs in football today. It's just unfair to a certain extent. But overall, I think Vardiol not only gives Man City options, but he also gives them extreme depth and quality. The ability out on this left-hand side now for Guardiola to swap and change in different positions is something that is invaluable, especially when he was so reliant on Nathan Ake out on this left-hand side. It's something that not only strengthens Manchester City, but also gives them, gives them different propositions going forwards. And it's something that is incredibly exciting for City fans. Was it a lot of money? Yes. But will it be worth it? Oh, you better believe it.